What is happening, ladies and gents? Slaymate here, playing a little more Valhalla. We are back after our break on, I think it's the fourth day? Uh, the day before events are said to transpire possibly terrorism in the heart of the town or the city. <laughs> but anyways, all right, <clears throat> gotta get back into character just a little bit. Ah, I love a sensation of feeling like you're forgetting something. Like all the musical choices that you picked for the day. Definitely that one twice. Maybe one of those. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> all done. Feeling better? Ah, fresh air does wonders for you. Well, for a given value of fresh, anyways. <laughs> Question mark. I insist that sounds like dynamite. No, it was way too long to be dynamite. It sounds more like some heavy duty tool. You're a heavy duty tool. <laughs> yes, I am. Wait, that. Damn it. Oh. Welcome back. Wait, I don't know these people. Betty. They're like cyber goth? <laughs> Are they both girls? Is this a dude? I am unsure of these things. <laughs> uh. I have sworn this place looked a lot more pink the last time we came. Maybe it's the light. Hey, bartender, what did that noise just now sound like to you? Oh, it's Deal. We've heard about him from somebody. Broke up with somebody? Something scandalous? Hmm. I have no voice for him. At all. At all. <laughs> I'd say it sounds like construction. But Betty here says it's dynamite or something like that. Oh, not you too. Eh, do you think it's dynamite then? What? No, I, I say it's a backfire. It's a gunshot! Hi, crackers! <sighs> See, those weird sounds have been going on all night, and we can't figure out what they are. Well, we aren't here to discuss that. We're here to... Um, who is he? Jillian, or Jillian, or nice to meet you, hot lady with horns. Cool. I don't know. You have more of a John face. Uh, where was he last weekend? Uh, I don't know. I don't care. He already made amends for leaving me to fend off all those dogs. Uh, anyways, uh, what do you want? A uh, beer. Two beers, coming right up. All right, let's get them two beers. Do they want double beers? They're getting double beers. That's all I know. Or maybe I only give one of them, is that sexist? To only give one of them a double beer? I guess I gotta give them both the doubles. This place isn't gonna have any alcohol left after I've given them doubles of everything all the time. I'm possibly like, where is everything? I drink it. Here you go. Thanks, this might be too much. I'll take care of anything you don't drink. Don't worry. So tell me about today. Call me Jill. Jill. That's a nice name. Uh, how's business lately? Uh, as usual. Uh, wait, I guess you don't really know what usual means for us. Um, we're not the kind to be filled to the brim during rush hours, so we don't have that many regulars. So, it's just the same. Nothing's changed. I guess when we came here with all the dogs, it was quite a change of pace, huh? You have no idea. So what brings you here today? I suggest coming here after work. It's Friday. A drink to kick off the weekend is one of those little things that makes life worthwhile. But 
he did suggest it after I found him hugging a stuffed corgi in his office. A stuffed corgi? Uh, it's a plushie. Not an overfed dog. I see. Uh, wait. You have an office? Uh, yeah. What's weird about that? I'm part robot, part emo, part... I'm probably in some sort of school. I'm a, I'm the, yeah, something, right? I thought you'd have a cubicle or a kennel. A kennel? I mean, you don't hear much about office boys getting their own offices. It's not hard, considering the rest of the staff don't use chairs or tables. Hey, but I have my own office. I, I don't know about that. The mess they left in the bathroom usually requires someone with thumbs. Oh my god. They work for the Corgi Company. Chairs and tables seem like lesser evils. And you're the veterinarian, after all. Uh, a kennel. What about a kennel? I don't know. I just thought I'd be, it'd be cute if one day I went to work. They had one waiting for me. Like they saw me as one of them. Uh, so, uh, where did you get that plushie? Oh, I gave it to him. It was my last, my gift last mega Christmas. Oh, wait, so he got defensive over being caught hugging a gift you gave him? That's the funny spot. He acted like I didn't know he had it. I was just glad he was enjoying it, you know? Why are you two talking like I'm not here? Because you're not getting any input anyways. Uh, so how's stuff up at Doglandia? What? Is that the name of the company? It better be. Well, we've recently struck a deal with uh, Farmer Fabrics to start a doggy clothing line. Farmer Fabrics? That name rings a bell. It's that textile company where the owner believes herself to be an alpaca. <laughs> oh, yeah. That one. Uh, we had her here some time ago. She got drunk and, uh... So much saliva everywhere. Oh. Uh, but anyways, um, uh, whoops, I may have skipped that. We hired a new employee and she showed, up higher, showed the higher ups some designs. After a couple of talks, they decided to give the clothing production a try. Those designs were embarrassing, you know. But something tells me that's why you were approved, or they were. You guys want anything else? The problem is, I try to read it in a standard way, but then, like, waiting for it to fill up, so then I double-click in order for it to show me the whole thing, but if it happens to be a short sentence and I didn't know it, then, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, then I double-click past and I don't get to read it. Sorry! I'm still in this bear, so I'm fine. You're such a puss. I'll have a Zen Star, please. Sure. Betty wants a Zen Star. Sorry, it's four of each ingredients. And she likes them strong. But I can't because it's already more than ten. All on the rocks and mixed. Booyah! Zen star. Thank you. Hmm. Something on your mind? That girl that's designing clothes. Laura, uh, her She's cute, but she should take more care of her appearance. I mean, right now, she fits the unkept, unkept cutie category so well that it's almost painful. It's so cliche. Um, that I can't help but cringe from looking at her. Cringe? It's like when you see something that's such a cheesy movie cliche, you just feel the need to kick. Whatever the hell it is. Kick! Better yet, I didn't think I had to say this to you twice in the same month, but you shouldn't kick people. I wasn't gonna kick her. Why do you think I'd kick her? Because I've seen you kick people before. Apparently unprovoked or due to complicated reasons only you understand. Fine, guilty as charged. I wonder if Killian wants to get kicked. Hmm. I mean, still. I'm gonna do something about her. Cause like I just need to. It's 
not an honor. <laughs> honor, she says. Well, maybe honor isn't the right word. But she has potential, and I'm not going to let her waste it. Jill, I'm going to go check the antenna on the roof. All right. She's your boss, right? Uh, didn't you meet her before? No, I'm just a veterinarian. The dogs are the ones that organized the meeting with her. I'd say she's really good looking, but honestly, those pants rob her of her charm. W uh, what do you mean? They make her look too uptight, and at a glance, she doesn't seem like that type. Some shorts or a skirt would fit her better. Hmm. Well, she wears a skirt or pants depending on her mood. Uh, there was also this one time where she came in wearing a kilt. That kilt was awesome! Damn, she has nice hearing. Now that I think about it, you have that hobby of, uh... I'm sorry? Speculating. <laughs> I, well, I don't know why I wanted to speckle something. Speculating what someone's personality is like. Based just on their looks. I mean, you did the same with Jill here. Amazing. Rick, she made that sound weird as hell. Yes, I have the habit of trying to guess someone's behavior based on their looks. No, it's not a hobby. You just make that sound like I'm some sort of creep. I did. Uh, what did you think about me? Nothing much, really. Mostly that you were too polite. Not a natural polite, though. More like a professional polite. You're like that because you need to be. That was it, really. Hello. The way you looked at me when I said your boss could use a skirt or shorts was interesting. You seemed, uh, interested in what I said. Uh, you'd like to see that scenario. Yeah, you're, you're thinking too much about it. <clears throat> what did you think about, uh, Gil, then? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. He's in a total simpleton, or acts like one, in a way that consumes the rest of his character. Strong, manly drinks. All right, they're manly and probably going to hit you right in the suplex. Nope. Come on, we can find one. Manly and strong. Manly and strong. There we go. The Mars Blast. It's spicy. And I can't make it big. Because I'm not allowed. Otherwise, it would be strong. Uh, just blend it, huh? Cool. I'm sorry, did I put the right? Okay, I did. Thought I went crazy there for a minute. Crazier than usual, which is pretty crazy. Here you go. Now, drink. Oh, man, now. You'll get used to it. Hey, Jim. Has someone ever proposed to you as a prank? You know, make you think they're falling in love with you just to reveal that it's all a prank. Jill? Um, first year of high school. The guy I had my eyes on for a whole year and asked me out. Saturday morning, I go to the meeting place and what do I find? It was all a prank by some bitches. Ouch. I'm sorry. The worst part isn't that they set me up, but rather that I saw it coming. I knew that guy wouldn't find me attractive enough to ask me out. I knew those bitches would target me sooner or later just for kicks. I knew it all. When it all happened, I felt nothing. 
they confirm my suspicions that teenagers are a plague that must be eradicated. Uh, anyways, why the question? Uh, hey, piece of scrap. Yeah? Those, uh, those are situations where you should have stopped me before I said anything. And it's better to learn by tripping yourself. Why the question, though? Um, I was asking because one of my ex's cousins has been hitting on me the past couple of days. If it were somebody else, I'd pretend to be straight with the, uh, oh, this piece of scrap here. Sadly, she knows who I am. The worst part is, knowing Vera, she probably put her cousin up to it as a practical joke. Well, I suggest telling the cousin that she should cut it out. If she feels genuinely offended, they might not have been in cahoots. But I'm just spouting nonsense based on what you've told me. Don't pay too much attention. That's better than my suggestion. Uh, what was yours? Waterboarding. I see. What? The fact that we know that she knows how to waterboard somebody is what scares me most. The Girl Scouts also taught me how to skin a deer. And I see nobody making a fuss about that. But yeah, your advice sounds good enough. Especially when you factor in that if Gina's being honest about her, she probably won't feel offended. Gina. Which one was that again? Blonde, not the flattest cutting board, but cute as a button. Oh yeah. She gave me the office Christmas party, right? That's the one. Well, it's getting late. We should be killing. Yeah. Thank you again for everything, Jill. Please come again. I'm back. Those damn cats move the internet antenna. Oh yeah, Gil. Some guy said I should tell you that the bunny's late or whatever that means. Oh, shit. Boss, I'm uh, I'm leaving early. Uh, if I don't come back in two days, uh, consider me as good as dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shouldn't we be worried? <laughs> I think of him as a kid that tells outrageous stories to get attention. And everything will be easier. Hmm. Besides, I know how to take care of... He knows how to take care of himself. Yeah, kind of. Except for with the ladies. He'll be here on Monday like nothing ever happened. In any case, I'll be back in my office. Uh, maybe now I can finish watching that didgeridoo tutorial. Oh my god, no. This just in. News? At this hour? The Apologist Bank has locked its doors, leaving around 30 people trapped inside. The security system was activated after somebody tried to steal information from the main database. Early this morning, the bank. Oh, damn, that's rough. Oh, hello, Jamie. Good evening, Jill. Come get... Never mind. Did you see the news about the Apollo Trust Bank? Uh, the newsflash just ended. Sounds like things got ugly. From what I heard... There was a commotion earlier today. Something about people being unable to leave the building. Let's hope for the best and that they are full of hot scrap molten act. Never mind. Yeah, you're kind of obsessed with people getting their armor, you know that? It's kind of weird. Uh, Gil stormed off just a minute ago, actually, though. Oh, I see. I guess the bunny I was late. I Wait, I guess the bunny was late. Uh, he definitely knows what's going on. What can I get you? Uh, give me a Mars Blast. Mars Blast. <laughs> he went from Torbjorn to... It was getting a little Arnold there. Which is one I haven't done yet. Hmm. Coming right up. Every after he has his drink, he'll be... Uh... <laughs> nope, that's not the wrong one. That's the moon. And he's got to get his ass to Mars. <laughs> All right. Enough of that. Up. Uh, Gotta have a flawless victory today. Mm -hmm. All blended. Booyah. Hope that's what he wants. What Mars Blast? Yeah. This is the one. Uh, Mars Blast have always seemed poorly named to me. Shouldn't it be red instead of yellowish? Then again, the whole red planet thing is still its nickname. Uh... So, how have you been doing? <laughs> well, I was working a contract, actually. 
But I, the, this is gonna get Arnold. It's just going to. <laughs> but the target got its armor. I mean, instead of the Apollo Trust Bank. Figured that would simply leave him be for now. And then you came for a drink. Yeah. Uh, part of me wants to ask you what your target, who your target is, but I'm guessing it's a secret. I can tell you that it appears to be a part of a power struggle somewhere. Uh, has the target ever made you a counteroffer to go after someone that has sent you? They usually don't live long enough. I also don't like it when I, the target who's seen my face manages to survive. What happened? <laughs> um, nothing. I just suddenly thought, what if someone sent you after me? I'd reject the contract. You would? I don't ask the name of many people, you know. And I always remember those whose names I've asked. I'm making you a sweet set of armor. They're real in my eyes. I'd like to know them better, and to some extent I care about them. I need that, because otherwise... It's just me and my turret. Otherwise... Uh, nothing you should concern yourself with. But don't worry, unless you suddenly find yourself caught in the middle of a power struggle. The only way I see you becoming tangled up in that kind of mess is if you find yourself too involved with gangs. Oh, thanks for the advice, I guess. Still, the thought of some people hiring others to kill somebody is... I can't have, wrap my head around that. And I don't want to, either. The world can be a dark place, Jill. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Should have just gone full Arnold. Say, do you think the people in the bank will be alright? This isn't the first time the bank is closed like that. But something is off about this. Not enough armor. <laughs> off? How? I don't know. Maybe it's the hour. Maybe it's the fact that the news is making an unusually big stink about it. Let's hope I'm just overthinking it. Yeah. Are you worried about something? A uh, girl was in here yesterday, said she'd be going to that bank. It's not like me to be personally invested in what happens to clients, but... Never mind. Uh, do you want something else? Yeah. I would like to mop. Never. <laughs> He's not going to have any armor. I can make time for one more drink. Fetch me a beer. <laughs> I just, I can't, I, I, it's not possible for me to, to do it, whatever that is. Let's keep it simple. Sure, all right, I'll, I'll get him a beer. It's, you know, once you've heard Torbjorn say like a couple of sentences repeatedly, 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 uh, it's, it's easy to repeat those, but to say anything else outside of those couple of lines that you hear, that's uh, that's a little too difficult. There you go, super beer. Here you go. I once read beer played an important part in human history. Yeah, I'm familiar with the theory. It's an interesting one. The gist of it is that brewing was an important part of society during its development. Drinks were ubiquitous with uh, while feasting. Um, they helped to foster bonds and build faction alliances. Given enough time and enough beer, larger societies will be born. You seem to know a lot about this. Nah, just enough. Last time you came, you mentioned something about going haywire. Uh, what did you mean? I'm intrigued. Have you ever felt like your queue was ready and you had to molten core? I mean, have you ever felt like your sanity has slipped right by you? Well, a client earlier uh, tonight was driving me nuts. Uh, but aside from that, no. Well, except for the hours that I talked to myself. Truth be told, neither have I. But I'm afraid of it happening. How so? I don't know. I just have the lingering fear that at some point I won't be myself. I'll go crazy. I'll wake up and stranger to myself and I won't care. It's just an irrational fear that lingers in me from time and there's nothing I can do about it. Like the fear of cockroaches for some reason. Or those god... Damn dragons. <laughs> Hanzo dragons. That's where I was going with that. It's okay if you don't know. Only instead of fearing a crawling nuisance, you fear lunacy. Something like that. Sometimes I wonder if uploading my brain would solve all these problems. 
Well, that technology is still a ways off. I've heard of a couple of experiments regarding that technology, but it seems everything's still too buggy. I'll have to wait until it's safe then. Until then, don't worry too much about the, those possibilities unless they're tangible enough. Otherwise, you know better than a hypochondriac. Good point. Uh, the way you said it makes it sound like it's less like something you feel might happen. Something you're just afraid could happen at some point. That's pretty much it, yeah. Uh, doesn't that make you saner? I mean, were you really on your way to becoming an unhitched maniac? I, I don't know if you'd think about it at all. Hmm, you might have a point there. Well then, nice talking to you, Jill. Uh, same here. Always a pleasure. Say hello to Gilliam. Gilly Gilligan Islands for me. When he comes back, tell him I've got his armor. Please come again. Whew. All done. You wanna stay here? Seems the street's quite restless. Uh, thanks, but I'll pass. I have a couple of matters to attend to at home. You do? Uh, yeah, I ordered a... Uh, the Nokomo module for my apartment. And it should be installed by now. Ooh, an Okomo. Isn't that a tad expensive? Uh, yeah, to be honest, I asked my mom for it. She had been pestering me about what gift I wanted for Mega Christmas for a while. She's been asking that for four years now, and I've always said I was fine. So I took the chance and asked her for it. Used up all the past gifts. Oh, it feels a bit weird to ask your parents for a gift like that when you're 27. I'm sure she doesn't mind. So, what will the Nano Camo, Nano Camel, the Nano Camels, the Nano Camo module change from your apartment? I, I got the basic plan, walls and one piece of cloth, so I picked my uh, Kotatsu, too. You have a Kotatsu? Uh, well, you know what a Kotatsu is, boss? I'm more impressed you know what it is. I mean, futons are common knowledge, but a uh, Kotatsu? Not so much. Oh, uh, yeah, days get cold and the heater might not be enough. And the Japanese mastered how to live comfortably in reduced spaces. Uh, you should invite me sometime. I want to see how you decorate the place with that. Uh, let's plan a day to grab a beer. Yeah. Well... Gotta go. See you tomorrow, boss. Careful out there. Oh my god. Flawless bonus victory. Perfect. Alright. Jill wants to buy a fan. Even though it's winter. Because she's actually crazy. Buying one will prevent her from getting too distracted. You can now use the nano camo to customize your room. Oh, can I? What's a nano camo? Ah, uh, just something to liven up things in this room. Ah, uh, she wants a fan, huh? Let's just get that out of the way immediately. Will it say fan, or will it say something weird that I have no idea what it is? The cyclone? It's just a fan. Fans are good. Gotcha. Alright, does it go in here? Oh, they did! Oh, she's got a nice little fan. Alright, so where's the nano camera? Is it on my phone? No. It is not. Turn that fan on, turn it on. Don't you dare sass me, girl. Duh. She got, <laughs> she's got some bubbles going over her head. Pet, pet the kitty. Hmm. Never actually clicked around her apartment. I don't really know. Alright. Oh, it was there in my phone. I see. <sighs> Alarms rise. Yeah. Alarms rise as the Apollo Trust Banks suffers terrorist attack. I can't believe I've let. Hijacked screens at downtown Casanova announced what seems to be a terrorist threat amid at the Apollo Trust Bank. The information suggests that, suggests that a currently unidentified bomber is already inside the building. 
White Knight's counter-terrorism unit responded to the threat immediately. However, the bank was then locked down by an external network attack. Uh, we might be dealing with a dual threat here. CTU's Chloe Bauer. Jack Bauer! Oh my god, CTU's Chloe Jack Bauer. Told he. Isn't Chloe? Chloe was in CTU. She was the mousy. I, she's not a secretary, but you know, she was the, uh. She was the mousy one. The comedian lady. <laughs> and then Jack Bauer. I like it. Chloe Bauer. Uh, the bank's been sealed shut. Using its own disaster prevention system. However, none of the terminals at the bank were working at the time. The building is basically sealed at this point. The hostages are trapped. I hope Sai is alright. Uh, the augmented eye is being attacked. Hi, everyone. We take your security seriously here at the augmented eye. And we have the obligation to disclose that recent articles on Alice Rabbit were vandalized by who we think is Alice Rabbit themselves. Or a very good impersonator. We want to extend our apologies and inform that we'll be limiting our coverage of Alice Rabbit to just factual news and not entertainment pieces. Sincerely, the AE staff. Oh. Thank God I don't pay those effers for a subscription. Pollution to reach historic levels next year. Even though most countries in the world have adapted their economies to solve the ongoing problem of climate change, Glitch City still relies on ancient technologies in order to keep costs low with profits high. As a result of this backward policy, it seems as though we'll be experiencing a huge increase in air pollution next year. Our contamination levels will force the whole population to move away from the city. Wait, move away from a lot of areas within the city. Soil is dying at an alarming pace said experts in the report. Having to buy special raincoats and umbrellas does suck, but experts say you better get used to it. <coughs> it's hard to do a growl for some reason right then. How long till someone says pollution is good? Well, there's a book. It says uh, it's from Al Gore. And I'm pretty sure he wrote it in the future. Alright, I guess that's all I can get there. Let's see. The Dangerous You. I'm gonna take a drink of water. Mm-hmm. Are these all new, or are they repeats? Alright. Why not just beat me up? I'm freaking crying right now. Let me tell you the story. I'm waiting for OP to deliver. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Anyways, here it goes. I was going home after buying groceries at the store, and I was very tired because I had to line up for hours just to buy milk. And when I finally out of there, a group of three white knights stopped me and started asking for my ID. And also wanted to see if my bag checked to see if I wasn't a scalper. And once they saw everything was in order, they asked me for a military service ID. And just, why the F? But I have that on me. There's no enforced conscription anymore. It doesn't make sense. And because I didn't have it on me, they asked for money or else they'd plant drugs on me. I, of course, refused, but they lose their patience. Wait. But they'd lose their patience, and one of them hit me right in my temple with a gun. I was bleeding like crazy on the floor. So they just took my groceries and left. Holy shit, man. I freaking hate this place. I hate it so much, I want to leave this god freaking damn hell hole. I'm so tired of this shit every freaking day. Hmm. I've been lucky to never have that kind of problem with the White Knights, I guess. Streaming Chan Thread. Streaming Chan's went nuts last night. Where the hell is she now? I don't even recognize the place she's at right now. <laughs> oh, I see this is for my... Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It doesn't look pretty either. At least she's getting some rest. What did I miss? Streaming Chan went to Valhalla, got a bit drunk, and got the hell out of there, and all hyper. Tried to steal snacks from a vending machine, but the thing defended itself with an electric shock. I'm going to marry Streaming Chan. That's freaking nuts. You just don't mess with those things. She fell asleep from the shock, as expected from Streaming Chan. I just hope nothing happens to her while she lays there. She falls asleep at the shoddy back street of a glitch city. 
She'll be fine. Ah, she was either already tired or the alcohol got to her somehow. The Apollo Bank is being attacked. And no one is reporting on it? Are you actually surprised? Considering the nature of their threats, it's clear that Quincy doesn't want to take the blame. What a freaking coward. Do we have any sources there? I'm po uh, posting from the site. It looks like someone inside the bank has a huge bomb threatening to blow up the building. Any demands? They want Quincy to quit and the White Knights disbanded. Wow. So they're actually helping the protesters? Um, that's not the way to help people. What if this is just a huge false flag to blame the opposition? I wouldn't be surprised. Ah, oh, man, this freaking place, low. Let's just wait for more info. Oh, may the gods guide Sai to safety. All right, let's stand a camel this apartment up. Uh, about. And again, it was come defended in 1968, the one not before the best number. And by another nano machine fabric capable of real time texture swab, meant for military use to bring out products to the general public at the most affordable prices. Alright. Camoton. Camoto is our mascot. She's designed by veteran character. Wait. She's designed by veteran character designer from Subakan Games. <laughs> Kirin. Kirin. 51. She likes. Musashi, Musashi, Battleship, uh, Tactical Fashion, and Peach Cake. Can I use any of these things? Come on. Over to here, change the walls, green. Alright, be that way. Rude. I'm gonna save then. And let's see. I've got sweet, sweet cash. Do you want to buy anything else with our hot amounts of money? Nah. Saturday, December 17th. Good evening. Uh, I didn't expect you today. I was waiting for you to call and say you would be coming or something. Things at uh, <clears throat> Paul Bank are getting ugly. So that means poor people will be looking for a drink. Uh, you can take a break, you know. You're quite the hard worker. And the street's not exactly safe right now. Well, they've never been when you get down to it. And besides, I can't afford to not come with the bar closing so soon. I wonder if any bar has used impending closure as the means of getting their employees to work. <laughs> Seems like the total opposite would happen. Uh, not to mention I get bored out of my brains in my apartment. So I'd rather come here anyways. What did you say? Ah, nothing important. Uh, Gil isn't back yet? Nope. I wouldn't worry too much about him, though. If you say so. Say, what's this bottle? Uh, a bottle of absinthe I had at home. I, I went to have it appraised, but the guy said that without label, uh, there's not much value to it. It's still a nice bottle of absinthe, though. I see. Are you going to serve it today? Uh, it looks like the absinthe can be detected by the station's database, so it's not counterfeit. I'll serve it only if a customer asks for it. Sounds good. Uh, want me to serve you a glass of it? <laughs> I'll pass. Absence not my kind of thing. Well then, I'll be in my office. Careful with that thing. Alright. Okay then. Time to serve drinks. And freaking change Tense. We need tense all day long. <laughs> you know what time it is. Wait. That's not how it goes. <sighs> no one here to retort. Man. It feels lonely without Gil here. I just hope the restlessness in the streets doesn't lead to dangerous or weird types coming in here. It's a brain in a jar. A brain in a jar, babe. Real good evening. Holy shit. That was a record breaking jinx. Um. Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? Well, oh, 
let's see. There we have a green fairy. A uh, green fairy. Hey, blue fairy. Hey, sorry. The action bug distracted me. Uh, let's give this um brain a blue fairy. Weird. Do we want to double it? Can I? I totally can. For the kids. I mean, kids don't. No, don't have alcohol. It's bad. Boop. Aged. Excuse me? There you go. Serve it up. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, we. This is the thing. Ah, uh, so, um. How are you gonna. Oh, you can grab stuff. I should have figured as much. You can drink stuff. Oh, well, and eat. Oh, I have the same system Lemon do. Uh, can I ask you something, um, Mr. or Mrs.? Oh, come here. Just here. And yes, a cutie like you can ask me anything. Who are you? Okay, Taylor. You stop being a creeper. Oh. You have to be the finest person I've met. I didn't go, okay, just Taylor. I mean, the first person. Not the finest. You definitely. Well, you're not unattractive. Uh, no, that's. that's too easy. You are a brain in a jar, right? Well, I'm sure not a hologram or a bag of baloney. I'm that, I'm sure. Yep, yep I'm a bona fide human brain in a jar. So, how, why? What? Is my handsomeness make you speechless? Uh, you're not something a girl sees every day. And that's saying quite a bit in these parts. You're not very handful. I have a speech prepared for these situations. A speech? Well, oh, you're saying one of the five great living body brains of the world. We're all brains. I mean, uh, I forgot. I mean, I found it again. We are brains living in conditions that allow us to exist as any other humanoid creature. All oh, well, computers in our jars scan our activities. Oh, in a slow but steady manner, we are helping the world understand the inner workings of nature's most complex computer. I'm guessing you prepared that after being asked the same question too many times, huh? Not out of exasperation or anything like that, mind you. I just wanted to have something thoughtful prepared. <laughs> Friend joke. Look, I even have a couple of pamphlets with me. You want one? Uh, sure. Uh, what brings one of our world's five brains in a jar to this place, though? Oh, well, I'm from around here, actually. I live in the sewer. And all that poop came flushed, never mind. I just wanted to take a walk for the first time in work. quite a bit of time. Uh, have you come in here before? Oh, sadly no. Otherwise I'd remember a cute face like yours. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, uh, can I have your name so that I can think about it later? Mm. Um, it's Jill. Jill? Oh, that's a really cute name. Not, I mean... Thank you. Say, what are you scared of going outside today? What with all the commotion around and all? Oh, well, it didn't stop you from coming here either, did it? Yeah, you're right. Oh, that's gonna take more than cryptic but ominous news to stop me. You're awfully energetic, did you know that? Oh, sorry. Does that bother you? No, not at all. Just that I figured a brain in a jar wouldn't be so happy. Well, I was alive. My body got to a point where there wasn't much I could do. This new state of existence allows me to accomplish more than I ever could before. You, you. Oh. Plus, I'm doing something that'll help people in the long run. Wouldn't you be happy? I... I wonder if anything will make me happy.
Do you want to make me happy, Jill? <laughs> Erotically? Uh, depends on what it takes. Don't worry. Just give me a beer. All right, then, yeah, I'll, I'll make you happy. One beer to make Taylor happy. And I can't double it, but I'm going to. Yeah, I can. I'm allowed to do whatever I goddamn want. Here, a beer. Oh, yeah. No matter what happens, beer's always good. Uh, hey, Taylor. May I ask you something a bit, uh... Indiscreet? Oh, you can ask me anything you want. Uh, while you had your other body, uh, were you male or female? Hmm. That's actually quite the question. Especially considering I don't really know the answer either. You don't? Well, I mean, I remember that my name was Taylor. No, do I? Uh, whatever. In fact, I remember every detail of my life. But that's the one thing that's a bit blurry. Blurry? Yeah. The team that put me here said that it might be a side effect of the whole process. But my family and friends say that even in life, I didn't put too much thought into questions about gender. So, you know, in the end, we're uh, back to square one. Wait, don't you have any pictures or anything else? Well, to be honest, I've chosen to not look too deeply into my own identity. Uh, partly because I'm happy in this ambiguous state. But also, because I have this gut feeling I'm not psychologically prepared to see what I used to look like. I don't know. I feel like if I do, I might crumble. Damn. Just out of curiosity, in a third-person scenario, how should one refer to you? Oh, well, by my name. I, I guess that makes sense. If you absolutely need to use pronouns, you refer to me as something like you refer to any other house appliance, a TV, or anything like that, and, and it. Are you okay with that? Well, in the end, even if I can see, I'm just an object. A sexual, uh, hmm, oh. Oh, uh, ah. <clears throat> that actually is something I've internalized a long time ago, even with my original body. I see. Well, if that doesn't make you comfortable, then feel free to use neutral pronouns. To be honest, you can refer to me however you want, pretty lady. Mm. I don't really pay mind to that. Uh, but this isn't about what makes me comfortable. You know, mm, you know what downside is to this body? Uh, I can't get drunk. If you want to call that a downside. Well, if you wanted to drink alcohol for the taste, there are many alternatives. Drunkness is a part of the whole experience. Why, though? Lulam can get drunk with no problem. Yeah, but in their case, their brain's a computer attached to their body. Getting drunk causes their brains to reduce the input speed of their bodies. Depending on the model, their drunk subroutine might throw submarine, what subroutine? Might throw in a different behavior as I could even. It's hard to get drunk when the whole point of you being in the jar is figuring out exactly how you work. Yeah, I... Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh... Question marks. Ah! Hey, Jill. Oh, Alma. She was the southern girl. Oh, just... Oh, Alma. Where's the courtesy one would expect from... Plebeian bar staff. Plebeian. Ple plebs. Plebs. Plebeians? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Vahawa. <laughs> what can I get you? Happy? Oh, now when you put it that way. Oh, well, hello there, beautiful. Huh? Whoa! Oh, you hurt my 
feelings with that, darling. Ah, uh, sorry. You don't see talking. Dismembered, um, brains every day. Disembodied, I mean. I mean, I did work a summer in a little maintenance, but even then those were talking heads. Oh, don't worry about it. At least you're not running and fainting. Your name was Albert and Taylor. Ah, uh, nice to meet you, Taylor. Oh, Sam, can I buy you a drink? Ah, uh, sorry, I only take people who are at least 50% organic and have at least one face. Hmm, I know just what to strive for then. Hey, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm just kidding. It would make me happy to make you happy by buying you a drink. Does that bother you? I guess if Jill's the bartender, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> oh, that's a three-way. I will pay for your next drink then. What will you have? I'll have a cobalt velvet. Uh, and you, Taylor? Oh, uh, I'm fine, actually. Wait, you're gonna have me drink alone? Well, uh, I don't uh, want to drink that much. Um, it affects my prostate. <laughs> okay, then. Let's make a cobalt velvet straight from Taylor to Alma. Cobalt Street Velvet. Yeah. I'm gonna get her saucy drunk. You know what I'm saying? I think you do. Because I just said it. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Thought I got it wrong. Rocks mixed. Booyah! Nice little cobalt velvet. You drink. You know, you've been nice to me these past minutes in the last three years. Wait, in the last three? Guys, I think my mouse was over that and I just thought years. <laughs> it's weird when that happens. <laughs> Let's start over. You know, you've been nice to me these past minutes and the last three guys have been in the last year. Oh, well, judging from the way you two talk, I'm guessing you've been a client here for a while now, right? Only for about half a year or so, if memory serves right. Ooh, ooh, ooh really? Ooh, one would think it's been longer. <sighs> it feels like it's been longer. Oh, shut up. You love me and you know it. So, were everybody in this place romantically involved or just not me? <laughs> I mean, hmm. So you just started coming here, and that was it? Well, first time I came here, the older guy. Speaking of which, where's Pablo? Uh, Jillian. Gilgan. Archimedes. I, I don't know. Adventuring or something. Anyway, the other guy served me the first time I came here. Nothing unusual there. The next time I showed up, Jill here was the one serving, and I don't know. I feel like she just gets me. There's this chemistry. We click. Uh, we click, she says. The fact that I feel more chemistry with her than many other people is kind of sad, though. Oh, it's always good to see a nice friendship. Sadly, I haven't had a friend my whole life. Oh. It's getting late, and I've got to go, and I've made myself sad and I pee a little. So what will you do, little lady, so say bye. Bye-bye. Please come again. Oh, that Taylor show was nice. A bit weird at first, though. Apparently, one of the five brains being studied by scientists or something. There's a summary of it in this pamphlet. Oh, well, let's see. Oh, yeah. I've heard of them before. I can't believe I've actually met one. Hey, Alma. Was your family really strict or something? Not particularly, no. Why? Uh, the other day you started mumbling. Something about numbers, not caring about what you do. About a 27 not caring if you have a Catholic wedding or not. Oh, gods. Not the numbers thing. Yeah. 
My family isn't strict per se, but my mom can be really abrasive. To her, the fact that I'm this old and not married or pregnant is a sign that I'm never going to have kids. Never mind the fact that she already has three grandkids. I love her, but she can be, well, like all parents. Yeah, I, yeah, I kind of get it. You also said the words, I was a blossoming woman and wasn't going to stand for it, after talking about some eighth grade teacher. Oh, yeah, that. You see, back when my body started developing, I got really shy. But at some point, something snapped within me. I wasn't feeling shy anymore. I felt powerful. My body felt like a new toy to me, one I was going to make sure to use. Of course, there were two problems with that idea. I was a teen, a horny teen, and I was surrounded by horny teens. <sighs> I'm not even ashamed. I still stand by the core moral I held back then. But it's one of those memories that you look back to and become terrified of how reckless you were. I mean, I could have gotten pregnant, or worse. At that age, I was always dressed in black and was obsessed with occultism. The worst I remember about I was being the butt of another kid's joke. Well, you know how the old adage goes. Don't compare your life to others. You don't know what they've been through. I think it's also like, um, walk a mile in their shoes. I don't know, something like that. Nah, I, I wasn't comparing, just wondering if some of that self-esteem thing would have helped me back then. Speaking of family, today I came because I needed a break from everything that's been going on with them. Oh, do you live with them? No, but Avita and Bernie do. Not to mention I visit them almost every day. Anyways, my second eldest sister, Diana, just separated from her husband. It's not even been a whole week, but she's already got some other guy in her bed. She left her kid with her husband's parents and pretty much forgot about them. Never mind the fact that they need to go to school and all that. Damn. Diana's life has always been messy. These days she's really making it big. She wants time for herself to live her life. She didn't think about that when she was married to a guy 20. She didn't think about that when marrying a guy she's only known for like three months. You should take your own advice. Hey. I'd never marry someone who could catch my attention so quickly, okay? Sure, there was that one time when it almost happened, but I blame the damn stadium kiss cam. <clears throat> kiss cam? Like, with, they were performing a concert? Kiss cam? Uh, I was going out with a guy a little sister introduced me to. Something he was... Seems he was her friend's brother or something. We went out a couple of times, and he invited me to a basketball game. The mood was nice, but then later the kiss cam focused on us, and instead of kissing me, he proposed. I almost got caught in the mood and accepted. Huh. So I take it you rejected him in a stadium on a freaking kiss cam. We went out for like three weeks. I don't know. Wait. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe... Maybe he wanted to get in my pants with the old sex on the wedding night line. But I, honest to God, can't understand why he thought it would be a good idea. That sounds too convoluted, you know? Proposing and waiting for the wedding night just for sex? Never underestimate the lengths a man is willing to go to get you in their bed. I've seen more convoluted plot twists over the years. I'm feeling tempted to ask, but I'll pass. Did you want anything else? Hmm? What's that bottle? Ah, some bottle of absinthe I found at home. At home. At home. I found it at home. Come get your... No. <laughs> it's unlabeled. Ah, uh, so it's not that valuable. Do you know how to serve it? I usually need some kind of spoon to perch cubes of sugar. But the station does all that for me. Uh, do you want some absinthe, then? Sure, let's try it. I got all my some absinthe. Go to the bottle drinks tab and drag it to the shaker before mixing the what? Go to the bottle drinks tab and drag it to the shaker. Yeah. Do I put it on ice? Do you serve it plain? 
Nope. <laughs> Careful. It's a strong drink. I'll tell you if it's strong or not. And it is. Holy shit. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, I'll be fine. I've had worse in college. What did you do in college, by the way, other than hot lesbian sex and straight sex? And three ways and four ways, five ways and every ways. Jaeger bombs, giant taco pizzas, a cute student teacher. Mmm. <laughs> we all did a cute student teacher at some point in college. I'm talking about studies, woman. I know, I know. I'm a computer engineering dropout. A dropout? I was getting fed up with the whole make programs for other people thing. I see. All right, now it's my turn to ask questions. Uh, about what? What kind of family is your family? Uh, well, I'm an only child. My mom and dad split amicably. Aim, amy. I can't say it. Amicably, amicably. There you go. Only took 40 tries. <laughs> my mom is a violinist, so she was always away from home with the orchestra. It's funny how you know how to say a word, but then to read it out when you see it sometimes just doesn't compute. I spent most of my time with my dad, my aunt, and my grandpa. Aside from that, I'd say my childhood was quite uneventful. Huh. Didn't you get something like your mom's artistic vein or something? I played the violin until I was around 16, I think. Well, what made you stop? I don't know. I just kind of said, that's it, one day and stopped. Oh, what about cousins or the rest of your family? I see very little of them, actually. Mainly because my dad moved away from home, or moved away from most of them. Most of my mom's family live in France to boot. Oh, so your mom's French? Yep. Oh, can you speak French? Uh... Wait, see if I can do it. Uh, je m'appelle Jacques. Je voudrais un international poulet français en pommes frites. Yeah, that's right. That's what I was going to order from Burger King. <laughs> uh, mon orgasur. That Nope, that came out almost Asian. This, I can't read French. Sorry. Oh, what does that mean? Uh, rubbish. I don't know. I can't speak French. <laughs> I did try, though, but college started and I stopped taking classes. Funny thing, I actually have a cousin from my mom's side that lives close by, but you'd be hard-pressed to make me spot him in a crowd. You're kind of lucky, you know? All of my mom's sides, all of my mom's side of the family lives here. Chances of meeting someone I'm related to on the street are ridiculously high. Uh, but yeah, that's the primer of my family. Nothing too interesting, sadly. Your mom's a French violinist, and you call that uninteresting. <laughs> I wonder if your family has ever made a fuss about you being a hacker. Hacker? It makes it sound too exotic. It's like if I called you a mixologist. Please, don't ever. Sounds like something somebody would say to make a bartender sound sophisticated. See? I mean, hacker. It's a good way to summarize it, but it's not the best. I'm a security consultant. People want to find flaws in the security and the systems, and I do my best to pinpoint where it breaks. Be it Glitch City or someone else in the world, they need security. I'm their woman. I've told quite a few stories about cracking the database. Wait, you've told quite a few stories about cracking in databases to retrieve info. Like some sort of mercenary, though. <laughs> that doesn't change the fact that hacker is not the best term to use. Makes the whole thing sound illegal when it's actually an honest job. Didn't you tell me you once secured some incriminating pics from a guy's cell phone? A mostly honest job. Sheesh. What made you become a hacker, by the way? I've always been a sucker for puzzles. Even as a kid, I always had a Sudoku or a crossword with me. But at some point, they started feeling kind of samey. So when I started college, I took a course on security system and felt like the kind of puzzle I was looking for. I mean... There are all kinds of things involved in breaching net security. You need to attack the stuff from different angles. And it's something that is always evolving. The whole point of everything is to strengthen security. Every time you think you've got the gist of it, they change everything. So it's kind of like an always evolving puzzle. A 
so I help make harder that. Huh. I think about it that way. It's less actiony than what the movies make it to be, though. No real time frantic typing, nothing like that. Still, seeing my code break through something, that's an amazing feeling. Like a computer orgasm. <laughs> Will you have anything else? Mm, give me something non alcoholic. I want to play it safe with the whole absinthe thing. Something without alcohol, simple enough, is it? I don't. I don't know what a fedora with perfume of plum. Super girly? Uh, shit. I could give her another absinthe. <laughs> you know? For the kids. Let's give her a... I don't know if this has alcohol in it. It's PG rated. I'm gonna go with that then. <laughs> so basic. Maybe. Here. I hope you haven't spiced up this one. Alma, please. I'm not gonna freaking roofie you. <laughs> Say, Jill, what's the worst that could happen if you don't get your drinks right? Uh, well, people have the right to not give me money. Uh, if they don't pay for it, I don't get my bonus. No bonus means less money and uh, tips, which doesn't help because I have to pay bills. Oh, I see. Uh, do you have to make an effort to pay your bills? Nope. <laughs> you have no idea how much I hate you right now. Well, my job pays pretty well, and I'm not the kind to spend too much on things other than food and bills. Maybe maintenance on my hands and new equipment, but aside from that... Oh, I know. If you have trouble with your bills, why not live with me? We could be roommates. Oh, I don't know. Moving my stuff through the stairs because the uh, moving my stuff through the stairs because the elevator's broken. I'm doing my liquor collection. Never mind the fact that my cat's a shut in and I got very upset the one time I moved some furniture around. The idea of moving just gives me a headache. Oh, you shouldn't take things so seriously when I say them. You know? I I don't, but I I've thought about it before. Now, uh, I need some air. I'm gonna go take my break. You wanna come? And do you wanna come? Oh, are you inviting me to the back bar? You should invite me to dinner first. Oh, I do declare. <laughs> Every minute you waste making jokes is time taken from my break. Fine, let's go. Boss, I'm gonna take my break. Call me if anything comes in. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure, sure. You betcha. Alright, I gotta, gotta say it. Talked way too much today. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.